Ladies and gentlemen, let's spend an inordinate amount of time discussing my PlayStation 5 physical game collection so far. So we are coming up on four years with PlayStation 5, and while many would make the argument that this console is not really kicked off in a meaningful way, which is true in certain respects, uh, but there are still plenty of games coming out, getting native PS5 versions, and getting physical discs, which I love that stuff, because uh, obviously I tend to buy physical if it's an option. Uh, I'll always advocate for physical media. And I'm at like 80-something so far, which is about the same... Uh, pace and trajectory of my two other platforms where I have the most games. That would be PS3 and PS4. Um, PS4 is still kind of relevant, so I'm buying for that still, um, but I always buy for everything. So these, all these libraries are getting a little bit bigger over time, but um, yeah, with PS5, I'm, I'm kind of getting close to like maybe like 180 or maybe 200 by the time the console is uh, done, quote unquote. But uh, still, we'll go over every game and have a very mindless, um, oftentimes verbose conversation about all these games that I have so far, which, um, you know, the marketplace is a lot different, uh, and my buying habits have changed a little bit, but maybe not all that much. Uh, but let's begin in alphabetical order with Alan Wake Remastered, which, uh, this game recently, Terrell was talking to me and he was like, hey, do you have Alan Wake, uh, Alan Wake Remastered? I'm like, yes, yes, I do. He's like, did you know that game went up in value by a, a decent amount? And I was like, no, I had no idea. This game shipped $30 at retail, and I guess Remedy at the time, I remember this quite well, they were uh, not pleased with how this game underperformed uh, for remastering and then sending it to print on a disc, which uh, kind of goes into Alan Wake 2 not getting a physical print. I don't have that game because I just am holding out for maybe them at some point doing it. Maybe a publisher, uh, another publisher will step in and do it. But either way, shipped $30 retail. Now used copies are like 60, 70, new copies are 100. Kind of nuts because it does seem like they only did one print of this game. Um, but I can't pass up getting Alan Wake Remastered on PS5 on disc, which if you told me that during the PlayStation 3 generation, I would have been like, what? That's weird. I'll get a physical version of that game on PS5. But that's how these things go. Uh, Among Us Crewmate Edition. Now, let me tell you, not a Among Us person. I think I've played this game all of 20, 30 minutes uh, on PC at the time. And so it's like, it's just one of those things where it's like, oh, a PS5 native version, it actually got a disc. It got like three different uh, editions where one was super expensive, but I just thought it was cool to get this one with this, um, you know, lenticular uh, lenticular little thing up there, right? And uh, it's sealed because it's like, I, I don't really, I guess, need to open this, which, um, I mean, you'll tell from like this angle right away. There's <laughs> so many sealed games. I'm not a sealed collector. I want to put that out there right now. I just have a different habit nowadays where it's like, if something uh, comes out, I have two policies, right? It's a matter of if I'm not going to play it day one, I generally don't buy it day one. Now, if it's a limited print company like right here, Anno Mutatium, um, so this was like a limited run game, and if they're not going to, and sometimes they don't tell you this, which can get a bit annoying, but if they don't partner up with a retailer like Best Buy uh, or sell the game on Amazon or whatever, usually you have to order it right then and there. That way you can actually get the disc. Otherwise, these games do tend to either hold that same value or they go up even further by the time Limited Run finally fulfills all those orders. Uh, but whether it's any kind of limited print company, um, it's just something where that's probably the only the only time where I'll buy day one or pre-order day one, even though I won't play it right away. Having said that, that's my one policy. Otherwise, I'll buy it once it eventually goes on sale or something. Um, but there's that. And then also, it's a matter of I won't open it until I play it. So in theory, like there's a lot of things in here that I intend on opening at some point, but it's like, if I'm not going to play it right away, then just keep it sealed that way. There's no dust and all that stuff that can accumulate on it. Um, anyway, going into our next game, Arcade Paradise. This game looks really sweet. And uh, so just one of those things where it was uh, cheap enough at the time. I don't think this was from a limited print company, um, but something where I think that was like $30 at the time. Uh, oh boy, BB and Tina at the horse farm. You already know, fam. It's a matter of this game. Uh, this is my retirement fund. This will be a investment. I'll keep this sealed for possibly 40, 50, maybe even 100 years. Now, that's something where I'd have to pass this down to some kin. But uh, let's face it, this game clearly going to go up in massive value. It's going to, I mean, this is really going to, uh, I would assume, outperform the S&P 500 um, based on a historical average. So let's not pay too much attention to what that game is worth right now. And I, all hope, I hope you all understand that was clearly a joke, but... Um, yeah, I bought that game genuinely thinking like, oh, what a weird print for this child game that I've never heard of before, even though it's like actually a well-known TV show. 
I digress the point is, uh, we'll move on to bug snacks. Now this is something where um, I will keep this sealed. Only reason is because I already have it digitally. Um, and so it's like, I just kind of want it to have a physical version of this game. Now, if there were ever a, a circumstance where I lose the license on PSN, then I do have this and I will happily crack it open. But it's one of my favorite games from uh, this console generation uh, since it shipped within that time. I mean, in theory, you could play this game on Switch, PC, it doesn't need to be PS5. But uh, I just loved this game so much, so I had to get a physical print. Because again, if it is available physically, I will probably buy it physically. Next, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. This was a PlayStation 5 launch title. So really, this was uh, this is only bought by sheer virtue of it being a launch title, and I just needed a handful of games to play and record footage of and do testing and just, you know, things like that, right? I needed a good range of software on day one because what I can also admit is that this is the last physical Call of Duty I've bought. And before this, gosh, I couldn't even tell you which one it was. I think I might have gotten Advanced Warfare at the time, but... Um, I mean, that, that, that's the only reason why I have this. And it's not like I don't like Call of Duty campaigns. I've actually always enjoyed them, but uh, they're just like not a high priority for me. They sell boatloads of them. I can just wait for when they're like in bargain bins for $5 or something. So, I mean, at some point I'll, I'll catch up on all the Call of Duties that I've missed, but uh, they're not really a high priority. Uh, Cat Lateral Damage re -meowstered. Now, you know I love this. Cat Games gonna be a theme. Uh, I actually did platinum this on PlayStation 4. Uh, that was digital at the time, so I already have the game digitally, which means I'm already um, entitled to the native PS5 version of this game. So I could, in theory, just uh, play that. There's no reason why I would ever have to ever have to open this. But again, my um, sort of you know habits is that if it's available on disc, I like having it on disc because I also value having value at some point which is something else I will always admit to people is that I am not going to take these things to the grave. At some point, I will probably sell all this stuff and get and get something back out of it because I will always advocate for the physical media of not only being able to play this on your own terms, being able to install and play these games offline, which you can certainly do, and that's always a misnomer, uh, but you know, it's intrinsic value that you can get back, even if it's less than what you paid. You know, they're not investments, but you're going to get something back. Sorry for that long tirade, but what we do have here is both Coffee Talks already did the PlayStation 4 version platinum on uh, PS4 that was in 30 Platinums Part 2 and then Coffee Talk Episode 2 which you saw in Part 3 that was a physical print and that was the first time I had gotten this game so yes I cracked it open and played it that way because that's the way God intended. Um, in the meantime though I probably won't be opening this anytime soon. Control Ultimate Edition uh, already played through the entire game through PlayStation Plus um, so I mean there, I don't you know again same story I don't need to open this but I do like having it uh, this was Crazy Chicken Shooter Edition. There's a handful of these games from this publisher, GS2 Games, where they actually do send these games to print. They're obviously bad and stupid and silly, and uh, for a second I was like, am I really going to like go for collecting all these? But then I'm thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't, because that it just seems a little bit overblown. Generally speaking, like 99% of this stuff, I mean, they're games I want. I, I don't go for full sets. I don't go for just buying something physically because it's it's cheap enough right like i i want to have to like I, I there has to be a desire there a want and desire to play the game see it all the way through um so it's like i, I this showed up like in a, in a collection update and a lot of these games you, you probably have seen in collection updates if you've kept up with them on the channel but um yeah this was in one of them and i think it was just a, a joke at the time but it's like i obviously i don't want to play that so i don't know I, i'm probably not going to do that anymore um unless it's something for the channel. Uh, Cult of the Lamb, this is uh, one of those circumstances with many other games in here where uh, this is where, you know, if you want to buy and play physical media nowadays, you do, uh, it's weird, the roles have kind of re uh, reversed a bit. Big AAA publishers, they are still more often than not going to send a physical print to retail and that'll be day and date so you're not losing out on anything. Uh, but for some of the smaller games, and when I say smaller, like that's still, this game was probably in development for many years and um, could have had easily a six or, well, definitely a six figure budget, but possibly up to seven figures. I don't know what the financial details were behind the making of this game, but I digress. The point is um, something like that. You know, that's not guaranteed for a day one print at retail. Usually it's not at retail. Sometimes it will, you, you have to order it through a limited print company. Uh, but it's like nowadays you have to wait for that version and you are more than likely going to be paying more than what is, uh, you know, what it's for on sale on PSN. Like by that time, there's usually a, a three to six month time delta and then 
the game is cheaper on PSN. So it's like, it is funny how, depending on the kind of game it is, the roles are switched over. And now it's not always cheaper buying physically. Now you're paying a premium to get the game physically. But um, at least in that case, once there's a lot of patches for the game, because people always tend to, you know, bring that point up. Oh, well, your discs are useless because there's all these day one patches. Well, if there is a delay by the time it comes out on disc, then usually they're going to ship the latest patch on disc as well. So that's also a benefit. Uh, anyway, the Dead Space remake. This is a wonderful remake, and it's one of the few horror games where I played uh, when it came out, finished it all the way through, loved it, and it's so cool that we got a really beautiful remake on PlayStation 5. Um, Death Stranding Director's Cut. This was a very fun auto plat platinum. Already played it on PlayStation 4, but it is a wonderful game that I advocate for, and it's actually been super cool to see the rhetoric around this game change in recent years. Like when it came out, it was like mixed and you know, there's a certain echo chamber and negativity surrounding games that if they come out and they are mixed, it just, it's sort of, that like gestates for maybe a year, year and a half. And then some games see a, a turnaround. And it's cool to see Death Stranding, uh, Death Stranding finally get the recognition it deserves. Uh, Death Store, another one of those um, smaller games, if you will, already did the digital version, but uh, pre-ordered the physical one. And I believe this is like a numbered one. Yeah, it's 404 out of 2,500 which is pretty cool. I'm sure some of the values on these are like about what I paid or they might be a little bit over. Um, and since I don't have to open this right now, but if I ever do, again, lose the license, then I'll crack this open if I want to play it. But still nice to have uh, just some value there. Uh, Death Loop, this is the deluxe edition, so it does have a different cover art. Uh, this was one of the... Uh, I really enjoyed this game a lot. I know some people are a little bit iffy on it. I think it is actually really engaging with the sort of loop mechanic and trying to figure out the best way to, I guess, approach the story, which is very hard to explain in the here and now, but um, something where it's just a, a really fun game. And I will also say you should probably play that, as, uh, that, play that one as well. Demon Souls, the PlayStation 5 Day 1 remake was uh, rumored for a very long time that Bluepoint was making this game. It's uh, honestly, I still vouch for this game being a sort of true next generation day one title, right? There's been so many complaints with this cycle that uh, we don't have these games that really feel like it's current gen, uh, but this is a absolutely gorgeous looking remake. It looks better than Elden Ring in many respects, and since so many people tend to, you know, associate graphical fidelity with next gen leaps, it's like, well, we had one day one. It was Demon Souls. That game looks absolutely nutty despite it principally being a PlayStation 3 game under the hood. Uh, Destruction All-Stars. My God, did we remember this game existed? Because I certainly did. Uh, they did finally, well, it, it was like, I think, a few months after the PS Plus debut, did a physical print um, at retail and also from PS Direct. It was $20, uh, and it's just so funny how initially <laughs> Sony very much was intending on selling this for $70, and then it went to PS Plus. A very big difference, which even then, unfortunately did not save the player pool for this game because it never really found a, a massive audience. I'm pretty sure there's just like the, the Reddit group for that's dead and just it's, yeah, people are not really playing it. And it's got some redeeming values. Uh, Dirt 5, a PlayStation 5 launch title. Uh, you know what, honestly, not big on the Dirt franchise, but you know, if I have to say anything about this, this was me trying to quench some motor storm thirst. And I think I actually did do a reasonable job at the time. Oh, Disco Elysium, the final cut. Uh, now, I think the situation with this game is still the same, where the value for this is uh, has held up quite well because what I am 8-Bit tried to do at the time when they were publishing this physical print is that they initially paywalled it behind a 250 something dollar like collector's edition that was the only way to get a ps5 disc of this game whereas the ps4 one you could buy that standalone um but then they i guess back down offered a ps5 one as standalone and i guess not many people saw that being offered by the time they were all gone you know it's just something where i think that's kind of what happened to this and so the ps5 print i believe still 50 60 dollars at some point it was over 100 but that's just off sheer memory so I could be wrong about that, but now we're moving on to our next pile here. Doki Doki Literature Club Plus, uh, such a fun, interesting, uh, 
you know, emotionally scarring game uh, that I played on PC. I'm sure many people did at the time. And it was cool that not only did it come to console, but it got a physical version as well. So um, it stayed sealed. Uh, it's staying sealed for now. It's also interesting that if you ordered it right from Serenity Forge, it had it, uh, it Serenity Forge, excuse me, it has a, a different seal. A much different seal from i guess most other releases where it doesn't have like a y fold or anything so it's um it's a genuine copy but i just thought that was worth pointing out uh dragon ball z kakarot you know i love the dbz games but it's just something where i bought this thinking it would be great to finally get back into the console dbz games haven't had the chance to to do it i i will say i've probably played about half of these so far um, and that's a mix between some games that are still sealed, but I bought bought and played them on PSN already. Um, or rather, PS Plus is usually the way I sort of get around that. I, very rarely do I actually buy uh, digital games, even when that's the only way to play it at the time. I, that's how patient I tend to be. <laughs> uh, Dredge that showed up in a collection update, Terrell showed me this game, and I was like, oh, that looks super cool. So I just went and bought the disc immediately, because I'm sure I'll get into that at some point. Elden Ring, you, you'll see this is still sealed. Um, just something where at some point I will get to this. I have spent maybe like four or five hours with the game so far. Uh, when that That's something where I had borrowed the disc from Terrell. Because uh, at the time I, I didn't buy it day one. Because again, my policy is not buying and not buying day one unless I'm going to play day one. But with most big AAA releases, if I know I don't have time to play it right then and there, I, I like to at least try and like jump in for like one night just to get you know, a basic surface level understanding of the game. Uh, that's just so I'm a little bit more uh, informed whenever we talk about games on Let's Talk PlayStation. Uh, so that one, that's my personal copy, which I've not had the chance to crack open because I know I'm probably going to spend 200 something hours on that game like most other people tend to do. So at some point that'll get played in a very big meaningful way. Uh, Evernight's also showed up in a collection update. Fantavision, same thing. This showed up recently as well. Uh, gonna try and build out more of the PSVR 2 collection because there's very few PSVR 2 games getting printed on disc, which I think there's a lot of value there. Uh, FF7 Remake Integrate. Didn't even really have the chance to open this particular version because I've got my PS4 one, uh, but also PlayStation, uh, PlayStation Plus. That's the other thing too. Like As far as values go, if you do care about that sort of thing, um, this is like between PS4 and PS5, it really kind of a sketchy thing, I think, to sort of buy games with the mindset of, I hope this goes up in value, because subscription has really changed that dynamic, right? I think in 15, 20, 30 years, you're going to see a lot of these games not be worth nearly as much because so many people are sitting on sealed copies because so many people have the opportunity to sit on them because they can then play the game via subscription. Right now, that's why I, I'm not really in the investment space. I know the numbers are cool to see. That's why I show them and talk about them. Um, and at some point, like I said, I, I will liquidate these when I'm possibly very old, whatever they are worth. I don't care. Just at least I get something back out of it. But um, I'm telling you, a lot of these games are not going to hold up the way I think some people are thinking. It's not quite like PlayStation 3 the, well, that console cycle and under, right, where subscription did not afford people the opportunity to buy these games, sit on them sealed, and then play them in a different way. So that's why I think uh, you got to be a little bit careful if you have that, that mindset. It's not a very good mindset to have as far as buying physical games go. Uh, Final Fantasy 16, love this. Uh, this is one of my favorite PS5 games so far. Uh, the Forgotten City, I believe this started off as a mod, which then you know eventually turned into a full game, which is always a really cool thing to hear about and see uh, actually happen in practice. So um, yeah, I had to get this. Very short, by the way, too. I wanted to use this for a 30 Platinums. Uh, I think it was part two I wanted to use this on. Either part two or part three, but um, I think it's actually much longer than I initially thought, which is why that game did not make the cut. Uh, but going back to something like Death Stranding, Forspoken has kind of seen a similar redemption story in that I'm seeing a lot of people finally jump into this game uh, for much cheaper, right? And that's always like a weird thing where people tend to be understandably overly critical of something when it just comes out and they're asking a lot of money. This was very much a $70 premium release. Um, so it's easy to be very harsh on something. But by the time you jump in at, you know, $10, $15, and there's also, there's already this sort of mentality floating around out there that the game's not very good. 
you go into it expecting, well, it's 15 bucks. If I hate it, then, you know, whatever. But it's like, oh, no, I actually had a great time with this game. So Forspoken is very much falling under that same, um, that same spectrum, I guess we could say. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut. What a wonderful PlayStation Studios game. Cannot wait for Sucker Punch to at some point show us the next entry. Ghostwire Tokyo Deluxe Edition, much like the uh, Deathloop game. This is something where Sony, during the early PlayStation 5 cycle, getting in bed with many publishers before Microsoft acquisitions and uh, doing a lot of timed exclusivity. Um, only one year between both games, so they eventually did ship on Microsoft platforms proper, but actually did not have the chance to play this yet. Got through Deathloop, not this one, and I was just about to at the time uh, maybe like a year and a half ago and something came up, so I had to put that on the, the back burner. Goat Simulator 3, try looking up Goat Simulator 2. It doesn't exist because they jumped right to 3, which is so hilarious and had a lot of fun with the first game. Um, but clearly, considering this is sealed, have not had the chance to play that. Ah, Godfall, our <laughs> one of the first publicly revealed and announced PlayStation 5 games long ago. PlayStation 5 launch, ti uh, launch title, and this game is not seeing the <laughs> same uh, sort of reverence and appreciation that uh, Death Stranding or Forspoken is seeing. This is still very much a mid-game, but that I had to get it day one, paid full price, because I just needed various games to discuss and talk about um, at the time. So that's always funny to look look back on Godfall under that, that situation. Uh, God of War Ragnarok, pretty self-explanatory, fantastic game. Gran Turismo 7, the real driving simulator. Now, first off, let me tell you something. This is another one of those things that I, I never liked this, uh, this critique against uh, physical media nowadays, especially with something like GT7, where it's very much an internet required game. You know, you, you, it's completely online based. You have to be logged into PSN to play it. It's completely tied to that server. Um, eventually when the game sunsets and the servers are done, as we saw with, with uh, Gran Turismo Sport, you know, assuming Polyphony does the same thing, they will deliver a patch for this game so you can play most offline modes completely offline. Uh, Cause in theory, they, there's many aspects of the game that can be played offline. Uh, so people tend to say, well, you know, why would you buy it via disc? That's so stupid. Um, you need to be online to play it. What value does the disc have? And I just don't understand that because I'm holding it in my hand by sheer virtue of it being a physical thing that I can hold and hand over to somebody else or take to a retailer and sell it. That's value. It doesn't matter if it's an online only game. And the here and now it's still, I don't know what it is. I think it's like worth 20 something dollars, 20, 30 bucks. It's very popular. It's getting multiple prints. It's uh, a highly relevant you know, game with live service content updates. So it doesn't matter. It's still worth something, which you don't get when it's digital via PSN. So I'm all about having, with, with power being in the hands of the consumer, right? If I don't want this, I get something back for it. Even 15, 20 something years from now when, you know, cause they're printing a lot of these. So it's a matter of like, it might be worth less than $10 by the time I liquidate it, but it's still something. You know, that's the point. Or I could hand it to somebody else and they can get some value out of it versus uh, not ever being able to transfer over digital licenses because we're just never going to get that. It's not in uh, their interest as the, the platform holder and the publishers. So just something where, again, a little mini rant there. Uh, Grand Theft Auto V. I love the Grand Theft Auto franchise, so of course I have to get the physical print, which I think I paid like 20 something dollars, even with, full well knowing it was gonna stay sealed because I've, I've got the digital version. Uh, Grey Hill Incident, physical, this one was on 30 Platinums Part 3. It was really fun to actually um, use this in the, the sort of interlude where I went to, you know, put a tinfoil hat on and pulled it off the shelf. And like, that's the one, I guess, interesting thing I can do with like videos like that is, have those interstitial moments of pulling something off the shelf and even showing that I'm cracking it open. So it's a silly little thing, but I always value those very small brief moments. Um, Hades is a wonderful roguelike. Oh my God, this game, you can easily sink. Uh, gosh, I think I did 90 hours, but I think a lot of people are spending much more, a lot, a lot longer of time, a lot longer of time with it. That is just not the right way to say what I'm saying right now. I think you, you're you picking up what I'm laying down though. 
buy this game. It's super fun. It's very challenging, but it is the perfect kind of roguelike where um, that skill progression is such a wonderful balance of getting better in that one more run mentality. Helldivers 2, a recent release on PlayStation 5. Same deal, it's online only, but hey, it's a physical print. Uh, day one, 40 bucks. Of course, I'm going to buy it that way. This game's actually a lot of fun. More fun than I, well, I don't want to say it like that. Well, I guess for me, more fun than I thought it was going to be. Uh, also very challenging, but I'm pleased to see that Arrowhead is seeing a lot of success with that game, more than they were expecting. Horizon. Forbidden West, if I don't uh, knock it over and break it, um, this is the launch edition, which uh, many of these games, you'll see that they, because that, that's a trend nowadays. I don't know why publishers insist on doing this. Maybe there is some data there that suggests that people um, want this label on day one. But um, I guess the, the thing we can say here is that a lot of games will, will get that, and if they don't get a second print, that means the only print of that game is the launch edition, which I think the Callisto Protocol is kind of like in that, that situation. That's the only way you can buy that game as far as I, I'm, I'm aware. Uh, but if a game does well, it gets multiple prints, or in the case of Horizon Forbidden West, it will get a proper complete edition, which two discs with the content on there. So in theory, um, this is not the version to get if you care about having all that content on disc. So I think eventually I will probably get the uh, proper complete edition with the Burning Shores content on there. Uh, Immortals, Phoenix Rising. I think the unfortunate thing about this is that Ubisoft was very much looking at doing a sequel because people seemed to really enjoy this game at the time, but yeah, they, they put that off to the side. Now it's no longer happening, which is a shame because new IP is a very valuable thing nowadays. Uh, speaking of new IP, we have Inscription, a wonderful game that... Um, did get a physical print. I believe this held its value pretty well also. This one was only limited to, yeah, 274 of 1250. So I would have to assume this is probably worth more than what I paid, but uh, a very interesting uh, card game that is um, best to go into it not knowing much of anything about it. Uh, Jurassic Park Collection. So I just picked this up as well. So one of those carbon engine games over there from Limited Run. Uh, Kana Bridge of Spirits, the deluxe edition, uh, a circumstance where I bought it on disc by the time I bought it on disc, then it, the availability of it on PS Plus, you know, it, it's something where by the time I'm ready to play it, I don't have to crack this open, um, but I would like to spend more time with Kana. This was a pretty high profile uh, game for PlayStation 5 early on, and I really did not get much time with it uh, back then. Uh, but speaking of a game that it's like, I, I can't believe we're seeing these things come back in a meaningful way. It's probably one of the better things about publishers being a little bit picky with, you know, re-releasing classics through, say, Sony's program or the Xbox backwards compatibility program is that if they're not doing it through those two programs, then they are, are likely looking at re-releasing it themselves. And so to see Klonoa get the Fantasy Reverie series, I mean, that, that <laughs> it's just mind-blowing. I did not think we, we were... Uh, we would ever get something like this. Um, and this is the Asia English, Asia, uh, Asia English version, excuse me, because uh, I believe uh, there is no NTSC print of the game. So it's something where I had to order it that way. But obviously I was like on board immediately. And I also have a Switch version of that as well. Um, the Last of Us Part 1, uh, of course, had to get this disc as well, which we can uh, go into right here the WLF edition for The Last of Us Part Two. Uh, this was a mistake on my part. I could have sworn, and like we cover these things on LTPS, so I don't know how I forgot this or didn't realize it even when I placed an order, but it only comes with a steelbook. I thought it came with a standard, uh, a standard game case because that's my thing, is I prefer standard game cases. I don't like steelbooks. I don't like when they have, you know, fancy covers on them or anything with like slip covers. Like I usually take those off. Like Inscription has that uh, or Death Store came with that. I take those off and I, I keep them and put them to the side. But I like having the shelf just be like standard game cases. I like that uniformity. Um, so like this, it's like, it's cool that you get a bunch of extra goodies and I was able to actually secure a pre-order because I, I did not get that for uh, The Last of Us Part 1. But um, yeah, I mean, I have the disc, it's in here in a steel book, but I did not throw the steel book on the shelf. So that means at some point, I'll probably just wait for the standard uh, retail disc release to get super cheap and then I'll, I'll buy that. I'll double dip basically, just to have it the sort of <laughs> proper way, I guess we could say. Um, the Last Worker is another PSVR 2 game that is on disc now, so happy to get that. 
I am also a very big fan of simulators and Let's Build a Zoo is just, uh, it speaks very much to that uh, younger self that were, you know, I, and I think a lot of people did this too, like playing those Flash games and um, management sim games and uh, even more premium releases at the time, like your roller, co uh, roller Coaster Tycoon or like the various Tycoon games. There's so many of them, but uh, I mean, yeah, this is like right up my alley. I love that stuff. Life is Strange True Colors. We did this for uh, 30 Platinums Part 2. I love the Life is Strange series. I've only, I think the only one I've not played is um, Before the Storm. So I do have to do that. But True Colors, oh God, I love that game. Uh, I loved that, uh, this game in particular. Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, you know, I've heard a lot of great things about this. It's actually a, a lot of fun. And it's, you know, a standard premium single player release, which, uh, it seems like it's far and few between nowadays, so it was actually cool to see this game come out and be uh, well-received. Spider-Man 2, self-explanatory. I think we can say the same for Miles Morales, wonderful games. Miles Morales, a PlayStation 5 launch title, a very beautiful looking game on PlayStation 5 if that's, if that's how you choose to play it, and same with Spider-Man 2. Uh, put that and line it up correctly, just so I'm back in the same order when I <laughs> once I put them back on the shelf. Uh, Octopath Traveler, you know, it's more a shame that we don't have this series completed on PlayStation because the first game is still not on PlayStation, so <laughs> it's just weird how that sort of worked out. Square does very, uh, they can make very questionable publishing choices at times. Um, but either way, I mean, I enjoyed the first one. I didn't finish it. It did get a little bit uh, boring and monotonous, I think, by the time you play how many characters, but uh, two, I mean, it was still something where like, yeah, I'll get that. Um, Pac-Man World kind of goes back to the Klonoa thing. It's like, okay, we're bringing this game back. Uh, cool. I, I don't have a problem with that. It's just uh, a really surprising thing. Uh, the Pathless have not had the chance to sit down and spend a lot of time with this either. Um, I don't think I really have much to say on that one. It does look like it's right up my alley, so I've got it. I'll play it at some point. Uh, Persona 5 Royal, yeah, I have not had the chance to dive into this yet, but um, I played the, the vanilla game, and uh, it's, it's like between this or like a few other games in here, like Elden Ring as well, it's like I, I gotta know I've got a lot of time coming up. And nowadays, I just, it sucks that I don't know when that will happen, but I would love to spend a lot of time with Royal. So at some point it'll happen. Uh, Quake, going back to another one of those limited run uh, premium releases, had to get Quake there. Uh, the Quarry, so interesting that this was essentially Until Dawn 2. We just learned about that from, uh, well, apparently this was from former Supermassive staff. Uh, so we kind of figured out what was going on there between Sony and uh, Supermassive and them uh, courting other publishers. And so this was allegedly Until Dawn 2. Um, and now we might be possibly getting more Until Dawn from uh, Ballistic Moon, which is comprised of former Supermassive staff. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart now. Let me tell you something about this game. Gorgeous looking. Absolutely uh, a wonderful experience to go through. Um, and it's great that, uh, you know, we do have a modern 3D platformer that uh, can still be relevant and move a lot of copies and be profitable. And But it's, it, again, it kind of goes into like that sort of... Uh, the whining we've seen this console generation of like, oh, we don't have a lot of next-gen experiences. Now, look, I, I would agree, you know, but it's, we have a lot of um, diminishing returns nowadays, and there's just very few publishers that can foot the bill for even making, you know, those kind of gorgeous, big budget, what we tend to associate with being next-gen experiences, you know, combine those two things, and it's a matter of those releases are far and few between. So the point I'm getting across here is that Rift Apart is absolutely one of those next-gen, gorgeous-looking experiences that you're looking for out of this platform cycle. If you have not played Rift Apart, my God, do yourself a favor. It's a perfect weekend game. You can you know finish that in two days, and you will be blown away by how just fun it is with having a. You can just turn off your brain and just you know kind of go nutty with it. Returnal, my favorite PlayStation 5 game so far because it is just a wonderful culmination of um, Housemark as a studio, them getting a bigger budget and being able to transform their arcade bullet hell action uh, top-down games into a full 3D uh, environment, also being able to incorporate a narrative, which um, I enjoyed a lot. I think the only thing I don't like about the, narrat uh, the narrative of Returnal, and this isn't really a spoiler, but it's just like, 
it does kind of end off in a way where it's left up to interpretation. I was not, I'm never really a fan of that. I prefer uh, having an outlined story of this is exactly what happened. And, you know, it's the studio telling you, like the writers, like this is exactly what happened. I tend to prefer that over the, oh, he, you know, we don't know for certain. So why don't you all discuss it as a community? I generally don't like that. Uh, Road 96, haven't played it yet, but I will tell you, um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the art. There's like writing on it or something, like as in maybe somebody took uh, like a paper on top of it and then wrote something on the paper. And so the pen impression is like still there where it says, uh, I think it says Andy or something. It's like so hard to make out now, but the reason why I'm mentioning this and why I remember it so well is because I ordered it from GameStop.com. And sure enough, GameStop did that thing where I bought it new and this is how it showed up, opened, and there was like somebody like wrote on it with pen and I just, it was an online order too. It's like, whatever, I'm, I didn't feel like taking it in or, or bitching and complaining about it. But it's just something where it's like, man, you guys are just, the reputation you have, you full well earn it when that, you know, things like that happen. Anyway, moving on to RPG Golf Legends. Oh man, this game looks wonderful and I wish I could tell you more about it, but I have not had the chance to play it. But since it did pique my interest, they got my money. Sackboy, A Big Adventure, another PlayStation 5 launch title, which is a wonderful uh, game that is really fun for, uh, you know, if you're like a parent, you've got a kid that you can play with or, you know, a significant other. It's um, kind of a feel good, again, turn your head off kind of game. And it's cool that the Sackboy IP um, was still somewhat relevant even going into the PlayStation 5 cycle. Now here's a bunch of games we can knock out right away, which is Shantae. I had very little experience with this franchise. It's just one of those games where I kept hearing about it and then it's like, oh, they're getting new prints um, on Switch, PS4, 5. So I thought, okay, that's when I'll dive into the series. Now commit to buying each one. Um, in this case, I chose PlayStation 5. So we do have Shantae, um, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, Shantae and the Seven Sirens, Risky's Revenge, uh, Half Genie Hero, all on PlayStation 5. Um, I'm sure I'm probably one of the few that were buying and collecting the series on PlayStation 5, since I know that's something where most people tend to buy and play the series on Nintendo, but a lot of multiplats I will buy on PlayStation 5, so I've got them all here. Uh, they are sealed, but they'll get cracked open whenever I decide to jump into that franchise. Uh, Soul Hackers 2, uh, I'd like to spend time with this, but again, just didn't have the chance to open it yet. Um, but it's, so like, this is one of those things, right, where it's like, if I'm not going to play day one, not going to buy day one. Uh, but it got down like on sale to around $20, I think is what I paid for it. And that's kind of like my, like, okay, that's the price I'll jump in. Maybe if I wait longer, I can get it cheaper on liquidation, but I am never that lucky. <laughs> Every time something uh, goes on clearance at a retailer or if Wario64 puts it up on uh, Twitter or whatever, like usually, you know, if it's like $5 or something, like I never am lucky enough to get it there. So I tend to just say whatever, even though I won't play it right away, $20, like that's the sale value where it's like, that's probably a good time to buy it. Why not buy it at $20 new instead of, you know, missing the clearance sale and then also waiting long enough to where either it goes up in value on the secondhand market and it's also a used copy, or if it's even like 15, 20 used, why not buy it 20 new now? So that's kind of how I approach things. Uh, Strangers of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. I think this game is a lot more fun than people tend to give it credit for. Um, so it is cool that this game also in a way has a, 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 it's been having a recent renaissance of people jumping in going, yeah, the story is ridiculous and silly, but tell you what, that gameplay do be hidden. And Stray, oh God, the 2022 PlayStation 5 game of the year, which uh, I do mean in a somewhat joking manner, but it got a lot of awards, which I am pleased with because it's such a wonderful game. Uh, this is the I Am 8-Bit version, which you get the, the patch here, and um, they had a problem with these discs where they weren't installing, which I actually did have one of those discs. I had a bad one, so I did have to request a new one, and so this one does install properly on a PlayStation 5. Subnautica Below Zero. Haven't had the chance to play this, but the first Subnautica is a lot of fun. Uh, Synth Riders Remastered, another PSVR 2 disc. So um, I will admit, I'm like I'm loosening up my sort of interest level there. So it's like I don't think I was like 
really like dying to play this or I had a huge fascination with it. But again, PSVR 2 discs, they're kind of few and far between. So I am grabbing those when I uh, see them pop up. Tales of Arise, uh, I had every intention of playing this the day I got it in the mail and I it sealed. <laughs> so that means I did not get the chance to play it, but I think I would probably uh, enjoy this a lot if I did you know, have that time to be able to jump in. Uh, Turtles, the Cowabunga collection, this showed up in 30 Platinums Part 3, so that was a great excuse to crack this open and play those, uh, those old Turtle games. Trek to Yomi, another uh, situation where it's numbered 805 of 5,000, and I, so I, I don't have to uh, open this because it's, uh, it was available on PSN, uh, PlayStation Plus, I should say, so, um, I had ordered it before it was available, right? So it's like, oh, that was a pre-order and like it's a special pre-order. So it's not like I can just cancel that and then wait to buy it at retail. Oh, no, wait. No, this game did come to retail, didn't it? So this is a different print, I believe. Like I'm just now remembering this. I think that was the situation with that game. Uh, anyway, Legacy of Thieves Collection. Nice to have this on disc as well. So two wonderful Uncharted games. Self-explanatory. Unpacking. Also a very cute, wonderful game. Um, and I believe I had a... I think I got a review code for this. So I might have already... I think that's how I played it digitally because I do have the Platinum. Uh, but again, pre-ordered that a while ago. Ah, uh, we love Katamari Reroll Royal Reverie. Again, like, I just... I'm, I'm so happy that we have a modern port of this game. Love the Katamari franchise so goddamn much. It is just, I love the writing, I love the gameplay, I love the presentation, the art style, I love the premise of rolling a ball and things stick to it. I just, God, it's up there for me. It's like, it's a top 10 probably. And also, uh, unironically, I'm a fan of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, so whenever uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire games come out, I do pick them up. Um, it's sealed. I don't know whenever I'll open this, but it was just, you know why not get it at the at the time because i think it was cheap uh and then you'll notice this is out of order because this is what i don't like is that you know sifu awesome game wanted to play it the only disc at the time was the vengeance edition and let me tell you i was definitely like so annoyed that like this was the only way the game came which is a uh, you know it's like a different, like it's a thicker box. It's it's a slip cover. It's a steel book. You've got these like art cards and and book that are loose. And it's like, I mean, it's look. If you're into the goodies, it's cool. But like, this just completely messes up the flow. So I don't put it where it should be alphabetically because it just it doesn't fit. Uh, and then after the fact, I think it did get a regular disc print. So at some point, I'll get rid of this and I'll just swap it over for the other version. But it's like, it was just annoying. But either way, like, I still, like, have it in my hand. I can do something with it to offset the cost of the uh, standard version that I do want. Um, and, folks, that is it. That is my entire PlayStation 5 physical game collection so far. I mean, yeah, it's, it's awesome that, you know, even during this platform cycle, we've still got a lot of physical media coming out. And, um... Some publishers we are seeing now are um, big publishers, mind you, for AAA single-player games that we would expect absolutely would get a disc. No longer are. On Wake 2. Baldur's Gate 3 finally getting one. I do have that on pre-order, but... Um, yeah, it's, it's something where I'll always advocate for it. Uh, the vast majority of these games can still be installed offline, fully playable, uh, even without day one patches that certainly do fix a number of things. Um, I always say visit Does It Play, uh, where that um, community is uh, wonderful. I'm in that community. I, I love being part of the preservation efforts and the cataloging efforts for uh, not only you know what is available to play offline, which is the vast majority of games, uh, but also, you know, how vital is that day one patch if you do need it? Um, so it's always something where I'll, I'll remind people about that as well. But hope you enjoyed this, uh, again, overly verbose conversation of my PS5 game collection so far. I don't even know if we will do an update to this or if I would even consider humoring this for other platforms because that was 80 games. I don't know if I want to do that for other, <laughs> other platforms that are like over 100. But uh, I don't know if people enjoy it. If you enjoy it, then maybe. But otherwise, that is it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.